Well, the Nashville Predators hit the waiver wire again. We'll talk about what Liam Foodie brings to the team, plus Monday, plus minus. We'll look at the highs and lows of the past week of Preds hockey today on the Locked On Predators podcast. Your Locked On Predators, your daily podcast on the Nashville Predators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making the Locked On Predators your first listen of the day. Every single day, we are your free daily Nashville Predators podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. As always, I want to start with a special hello to our loyal Locked On Pred heads out there, the everydayers who tune into every single show. We love you guys. We appreciate the support you give us week after week. I'm Nick Morgan. I'm a writer at Penalty Box Radio, and I have a partner in crime. You do. I'm Ann Kimmel. I'm a writer at the Hockey News. And I've missed you. I'm back. <laughs> Yay. Uh, it's great. Yeah. Went, went to London uh, to watch the Titans play the Ravens. That was terrible. Mm. Uh, and uh, I was, thank God for the last two Predators games, because I really thought I was going to have to come back and talk about uh, the Predators' start to the season. Uh, yeah. Boy, that, that's, that big loss to Edmonton. Uh, that was rough. Great. That was yeah. rough. Uh, but thank God, uh, slightly happier things to talk about. Also want to mention today's episode real quick is brought to you by Sleeper. Download the Sleeper app and use promo code LOCKEDONNHL to get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. All right. Uh, a lot has happened uh, in know. the past two weeks. Uh, i did you not, had fish you know, and chips, I'm assuming. Yeah, there was fish and chips. Uh, How was a it? lot of a lot of pub beers. Yes. Yes. Um, all delightful, I'm sure. A couple Harry Potter filming locations. Uh, mm. so all around good trip. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, the day I came back was the Predators beating the New York Rangers. So, you know, I would like to think that um take it's credit my responsibility that the predators have kind of turned things around the last couple of games because i've actually been watching the past two games <laughs> okay look pressure's on now like you have the schedule you know what you need to do yeah you gotta, uh, if, you gotta do what you need to do now nick yeah if there's like an aspen colorado ski trip coming up uh, i'll give everybody a heads up right uh, just just so somebody else can carry the good juju yes yeah. Uh, a lot to get to on today's episode, but we'll start out with a bit of news. Predators uh, really loving that waiver wire thus yeah. far in the season. Uh, another waiver pickup, Liam Foody, former first round pick from the Columbus Blue Jackets. Uh, coming into the Nashville lineup, there's been a lot of people that have kind of pointed out, you know, first round pick, high potential Really good skater, just really hasn't figured out a way to kind of put all of his game together at the NHL level yet. That's been the topic of conversation. So it seems like, you know, another sort of reclamation project. Can the Preds get something um, out of this prospect who maybe just needs a little bit more time? I will point out, though, Anne, mm -hmm. uh, talking to some Blue Jackets people, the consensus was that, yeah, like Foodie struggled, really got off to a bad start last season. But the past two months or so of last year's season, right? Foodie started playing a little bit better. Seven goals over the past, like over the last two months of the year, uh, started getting more consistent minutes, was averaging about, you know, 18, 19 a game um, within the past, you know, the last couple of weeks. So uh, it seemed like maybe trending in the right direction. What do you make uh, of the Predators getting Foodie to the roster? I absolutely love this move. I think this is brilliant by Barry Trotz on a number of levels. First of all, you are getting some first round picks, which we all know that doesn't necessarily equal anything, but there are players who have shown potential in specific areas of their game. You know, you talked about his skating is one. Also, they've talked about, you know, this is somebody who could really score goals if he can kind of land in the right spot. And I, you know, in talking to some folks from Columbus, one of the challenges for Foodie was that he kind of came in in that John Tortorella era where 
uh, Torts is like, I want to see really great defense, really great defense, you know, and, and that at the time was really not an aspect of Foodie's game that was excellent. And so that kind of affected his time. And he was also one of those players who COVID kind of messed with his time. He didn't get a lot of time um, between playing uh, in the OHL with the London Knights and then kind of getting with Columbus. He had a very short stint in the AHL. So, you know, maybe some time there with Milwaukee may be really good for him too. Little bit of trivia. Foodie played with the London Knights with none other than our dear friend, Luke Evangelista. They spent two seasons together with the London Knights. Uh, he was there for uh, Evangelista's rookie year and then second year, and then uh, Foodie moved on. But I like this. Look, I think this is the way to, to put together a team and to find those little gems. I, yeah. I'm all for this. It feels like Barry Trotz is diamond in the rough hunting. And while we're yeah. talking about waiver wires, uh, one of my pluses was uh, Samuel Fagimo. Come on. I keep wanting to call Carl for some reason. They've done it multiple <laughs> times. Uh, played his first game with the team and got a brilliant goal brilliant. Uh, you know, in the first period and four minutes of power play time. Uh, so it, it seems like, you know, that's kind of the type of player that Barry Trotz is going after is just somebody with some high upside, like somebody that you polish a little bit. Maybe they turn into something more than what they've been already. We see Fagimo come in right for, you know, a, a brilliant shot, like a Gosh, beautiful yes. shot. Uh, there's not, I'll be honest, like. Already, I would say maybe like top five shots on the Nashville Predators. Yeah. Um, yeah. Incredible. Like you just, just, you know, the Predators need somebody like that who can just rip it. Uh, and then you got Liam Foody, who's fast, um, you know, can play a little bit of a two way game. So all of a sudden, you know, the Nashville Predators picking up some project players. And look, this is a team that has the patience to let those guys develop Absolutely. a little bit. So yeah. like what Barry Trotz uh, is doing there. Uh, and it's Monday. Come on now. Which means it's time for plus minus. Uh, you guys who have listened the past couple of years know how this works. Every Monday we break down things we like about the Nashville Predators at the moment. Give them some pluses. Uh, take things that need some improvement and drop minuses on them. Uh, and let's start with a plus right off the bat. Uh, who's your first plus? My first plus actually is Sam Fagimo, but let me build some plus around your Sam Fagimo plus here. So, you know, of course, came into his first game. I want to give him a plus for two things. First of all, I want to give him a plus for what he's done with the time he's been given by the National Predators, because in talking to Sam Fagimo, one of the things that we asked him was, like, has it been really hard to sit by and watch and not get into games? And he he says, not at all. I've got to practice with this team and then I get to sit and study game film and I get to learn. And so I want to give a fat plus to him, not just for coming in, scoring a goal, playing on the power play, but for embracing the opportunity and being positive about every opportunity that he was given and taking advantage of every moment that the Nashville Predators have given him, because that's how you turn a really good player into a great player. So much of it is on them and what they do with it. So I want to give him a plus for that. I also want to give him a plus for most uh, heartwarming things said in a post game uh, that made the mom and we go, oh, because Sam Fagimo's mom and brother got to come to Nashville for his uh, debut here as a Predator, got to see him score that goal. And friends, that was the first time his family's ever seen him play in the NHL. Mm, yeah. So it was, I know that's the sound I made too. <laughs> it's like, it's oh. a, yeah, I mean, that's that's always the the coolest thing is like the family reactions to, like, yeah. you know, first uh goal and you know all that and, you know he'd scored in LA but you know first with his new team is certainly right good. and and you know for his family to be there for the first time to see him skate in an NHL game and to be able to score for them I think it meant a lot to him and again I just want to go back to you know this is a player that was placed on waivers what can that do for your confidence and then yeah. take advantage of your situation and here we are so Samuel yeah. slash Carl Fagimo hats off 
Yeah, Sarl. We'll, we'll call Sarl. Him. Yeah, just just to add to your point, real quick, Ann. Uh, it's especially tough when you know you get claimed by a team and you go, okay, like this is my chance. Like I'm going to get an opportunity to kind of go, you know, above what I've been so far. You know, prove that there's a lot left in the tank in me. And it's tough to do that and then sit on the bench right uh, for the first you know five games of the yeah. season and that's there really wasn't sort of a knock at Fagimo. that was more of look we have players who have been in camp you know a month longer than him that know the system a little bit better that have played together longer uh and it was you know almost like the ellie tolton situation in seattle last year remember uh he got claimed in off waivers in in what november yeah i think it was and it I wasn't so. It wasn't until I think like the week before Christmas that he actually got into the game. And then we know once he did, he just started doing gangbusters. Yep. I'm sorry to bring all this up again. Uh, I mean, maybe that's the situation for Fagimo. And look, it might take, you know, a little bit for Liam Foodie to, to get in the lineup too. But, you know, he's going to have that same opportunity. It's about making the most yes. um, uh, of the opportunities that you get. Uh, more to come in just a second. Uh, we need to talk about the Predators' top line and their performance so far this season. Plus, uh, some question marks around the Predators' use of tribute videos. That's a conversation we're going to have in just a second. But first, I want to mention today's episode is brought to you by Sleeper. Let me know which one of these you think is most likely to happen this season. The Preds win the Stanley Cup, Ryan McDonough scores a hat trick, or you can win big on fantasy hockey. We're going to give you a hint. It's the winning the fantasy hockey one. These are all possible scenarios, but to have a chance at winning big, you need to play daily fantasy hockey on Sleeper. As the official daily fantasy app for the Locked On NHL Network, Sleeper is our top choice for daily fantasy sports, especially daily fantasy hockey. With Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests. With studs like the Predators' top line, Philip Forsberg, Ryan McDonough, we'll talk about them in a second, plus guys like Ovechkin, Crosby, Kale McCarr. All you need to do is pick more or less on stats for these stars. You can choose stats like goals, assists, saves plus minus and more you heard me preds fans a hundred times payouts on sleeper so start paying attention and start getting your picks right so you can win big plus it's all on an app that's fantastic i use sleeper for nfl i have a group chat uh both with my players like my league that's been going on for 10 years but also connecting with other fans fans from around the world who also play daily fantasy it's a fun community you guys are really going to have fun playing daily fantasy hockey on here don't take my word for it try it yourself use promo code locked on nhl and you'll get up to a 100 match on your first deposit terms and conditions apply again locked on nhl see sleepers terms of use for details all right, and continuing with our Monday plus minus, want to give a shout out to the Predators top line. A big old fat plus for Big me. old fat plus. Philip Forsberg, Ryan O'Reilly, and Yuso Parsonen. That top line has been cooking. Uh, 12 combined points so far to start the year. Um, yeah, I mean, that's a pretty good point total. Maybe seems a little modest, but you look at some of the advanced analytics of these guys. Gosh. Um, among all lines in the NHL that have played together for at least 30 minutes so far this season, uh, 76.5% expected goals percentage, which means they, whenever they're on the ice, whoever they're going against with on the other team, their line is getting 76% of the best scoring opportunities. Uh, also in that same group, expected goals per 60 minutes, uh, they lead the league with 5.44 expected goals over 60 minutes. For those of you not really hip on advanced analytics, that basically says the way they're playing, that line should account for two goals per game, five on five. Uh, that's really good. That's like the the Connor McDavid Leon Drysail connection right there. So listen, Ann, it, it's a long way to go this season. Uh, there's a lot of ups and downs, but I will say, so far this top line of O'Reilly, Forsberg, Parson, and 
They're doing everything right. They're generating good scoring chances. They're possessing the puck. They're attacking. They're going for the jugular when they're getting opportunities on offense. You have to be encouraged by what you've seen from this top line already. It is so exciting to watch these three together. And there's so much to like about what they're doing. You know, we've talked about Philip Forsberg. This is somebody who is generating a lot of offense, you know, and got his first goal of the season, which I think is great. And I think, look, friends, it's it's just it's going to take off from here for him. I've mentioned I could do an entire week's podcasts on Ryan O'Reilly and how fascinated I am by watching every little tiny thing he does in a game. I think he's great. The thing I love best is Forsberg, Ryan O'Reilly, and Yuso Parsonen. Because is this not a great spot for uh, a young player like Yuso Parsonen, who has a lot going for his game? I mean, he's a very big, strong, physical presence. He's got a great offensive sense about him. You know, just such a smart player. But what an amazing place for a young player to land and continue to develop their game, their hockey sense, get a sense of the pace of the NHL. Like these three together, I think you, you've you really landed on something. The statistics you know, agree. You're, you're, you're creating a lot of good things with this top line. And, and I'm with you, the production numbers, the actual production may seem a little uh, sparse compared to what they're generating, but that's all going to come. And how exciting is it to have a top line that's producing like this? Yeah. You know, it really is. You do get that feeling when you see 99 and 75 take the ice. You kind of go, OK, because, you know, something really amazing can happen. And it's not just on one end of the ice. You know, Philip Forsberg, we talk about, you know, his shot and his offensive sense. The 200 foot game that he has shown you know, in the beginning of this season has been so impressive defensively, the plays that he has made, the poke checks, you know, the, the, you know, stealing of, you know, takeaways and this kind of thing. Like you're yeah. seeing such a great 200 foot game from these three guys. So I agree with you. This is so exciting. This is why we show up. Predator yeah. hockey. This is so fun. Yeah. It, it certainly gives you a glimpse of, I think, what this line can be in the future and how the Predators can play in the future. Also, let's throw somebody else in that mix. Tommy Novak, four goals so far this season. He plays with that trio a lot on the power play. So yeah. he's kind of like the extra, you know, addition to that top line group. He deserves some kudos as well for how well he's played. Um, and, you know, just to hit on your point real quick. Doesn't Yuso Parsonen's game kind of remind you a little bit of a young Ryan O'Reilly? Yes. Just that very strong two-way, always mm -hmm. buzzing around the puck kind of thing. Yes. And I feel like that's a perfect sort of match. Yes. You know, some, somebody that can rub off on Yuso Parsonen. Yeah, I yeah. absolutely agree. Absolutely yeah. agree. Well, can I do a plus off of, I know normally we go to minus, but can yeah. I just build a plus off of this one real quick? Go, go real quick. Yeah. Real quick. So I want to do another one of my pluses is the offensive production and where it's coming from. Cause we're talking about, you know, this top line, obviously generating a lot, but our goal leader right now, y'all Tommy Novak. Yeah. Tommy Novak, you know, who's right behind him. Colton Sissons. Let's hear it for Colton Sissons. You know, you've got Cole Smith with two goals. I love that we're seeing four lines mm -hmm. generating offensive chances. Yeah. Um, and and we, you know, talked about this. How's that going to work with Andrew Burnett? You know, are you going to have line identities? Are you going to? No, there's when when anybody goes out on the ice, anything can happen. And I love, obviously, only want to see all good things for Tommy Novak because he's just precious and dear, but you love the fact that, you know, when Colton Sissons is on the ice, he is creating offense and he is a jack of all trades. You know, you count on him for everything, but you are seeing offense coming up and down this lineup. And it's great to know, like, you're going to get this top line producing. And you've also got some of these other quote unquote depth pieces that are producing. So let's hear it for some offensive production from the Nashville Predators this week. Crank yeah, it to out. Your point, uh, you know, Philip Forsberg leads the team with five points. Yeah. Uh, other players with four points right behind him. Gustav Nyquist, Ryan O'Reilly, Tyson yep. Berry, Tommy Novak. Uh, Colton Sissons has three goals. Kiefer Sherwood has three points. Cole Smith yep. has three points. Evangelista has three points. So there is a lot of balanced scoring. Yes. Exactly what, you know, you would kind of want to see from a team that rolls out 
um, you know, four consistent lines. So there yeah. is a lot to like uh, about that. Uh, there's also some things not to like about what the Nashville Predators have done so far this season, uh, including something not related to really anything on the ice, more of just, I guess, a board media department. We'll get to that in just one second. I first want to let you know that this episode is brought to you by our great friends at eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience, that's what brings home the winning trophy. That's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die. You will always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusion supply, eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. All right, Ann, it hasn't been all sunshine and rainbows for the Nashville um, Predators so far this season. A couple of things uh, to talk about. One, to me, is the penalty kill. Uh, the Nashville Predators penalty kill, not great. Uh, we talk about all those really cool stats that uh, show you how well the offense has been doing this year. Uh, on the other end of that, Nashville Predators uh, 30th in penalty kill percentage this year. Uh, not only that, but they are second to last in a number of shots they've allowed uh, on the penalty kill this year, and also second in expected goals against uh, on the penalty kill. So this isn't just, you know, teams ripping off a good shot to get something past UC Soros. Right. Uh, this has been more of a, oh, there, that, that penalty killing unit is porous. Uh, in, in six games this year for the Nashville Predators, uh, they have allowed a power play goal in four of those. Three of those games uh, allowed two or more power play goals. The Predators did uh, manage to, you know, keep the Sharks off the board 0 for 2 last time, but also six shots allowed in just those two power plays. So this is an area in which the Nashville Predators are going to need to tighten up a little bit, Anne. Yeah, I absolutely agree. And it's hard because number one, we played Edmonton in our defense. So that that's we not play tough teams. Let's, we play tough let's, teams. Be fair but it doesn't matter. You still have to keep the puck out of the net. But it's also tricky because a couple of times some of our best penalty killers are the ones that are in the box. And you can't, you just can't do that. Mm -hmm. You know, and it and it's frustrating because I think Nashville has a, a a good penalty killing unit. They've got some great talent. I mean, Ryan McDonough, is there a part of his body that has not blocked a shot? I don't think so. But I agree with you. And part of that just starts way, way back at the beginning. Stop taking dumb penalties. Yeah. Stop taking but, dumb But it's penalties. funny because the Predators, uh, you know, are, I think, like, They're top not 10. I'm not sure where they were after yesterday's games. The last time I checked, they were, like, eighth uh, right. in fewest penalty minutes. So, right. like, they're, they're, you know, they're given less real estate for those opposing power plays to work. It's just kind of been a little bit porous on the back end so far. Yeah, it's it's been a little bit rough. And that's something that I feel like last year we, you know, we didn't have a lot of confidence in, in a ton of things, but we felt like the penalty kill was right there. So I agree with you. That's something that's got, it's just got to be better. I mean, and yes, you have UC Soros, but let's not, let's not take full advantage of the man. Yeah. So yeah, I agree with that. Let's talk about another minus Anne. <laughs> uh, so... <laughs> I mean, this is this is kind of a backhanded minus, but so the Predators played the San Jose Sharks did on, on Saturday night. Yeah, uh, about halfway through the first period, a tribute video comes on. Uh, you know, a long emotional tribute video. Of course, we just had that big one to Matias <laughs> Paul. We followed up with a long extended thank you. 
uh, for Luke Cunning and Matt Benning. Uh, now, now look, like both lovely, yeah, people. yeah love, lovely, lovely people. people, lovely people. Um, mm -hmm. what did they do to kind of warrant a warm welcome back? Like, yeah. like what? What's their legacy? Like, you know, you you're in that moment, you're kind of waiting for like, is it going to be the Simba cam or the dance cam or the karaoke cam or the flex cam? And yet you hear this like Sarah McLaughlin like music start up and you look up at Fang Vision and you're like, ah, did not expect to see that happen. Yeah. <laughs> so like yeah, like here's the part that made it even more awkward, I think. And again, want to say, love Luke Cunning, love Matt Benning. Like, great, great people. Nothing against them. I'm sure they're delightful. And, you know, thank you for what you did here in Nashville. But yeah. you get a tribute video. And, and okay, that's cool. But there sits Mikhail Granlin, y'all. He, I know he wasn't on the ice. But he was in the He game. was in the building. Yeah. He was in the game. I saw him at the game. And he sits there and you're like, hey. Crickets for McGill <laughs> Grant. Yeah, like you can't just pan the camera over to him and have him wave. Like this just was it was, I mean, they did that for Ryan McDonough. But again, you go back to what did Ryan McDonough mean to Tampa Bay Lightning? I mean, well, that's yeah. what two Stanley comes with them. Right. Luke Cunning and Matt Benning. Yeah. National Predators. Like what, like where is, and I think this is maybe an open-ended question. Do you do tribute videos for everybody? Because yeah. the NHL is literally like, in a lot of ways, it's like dating at a small Christian school. You just swap in partners yeah. and it's just going to be TV timeout after TV timeout of tribute videos. If you don't have some sort of like, like Matthias Ekholm is one thing. Yeah. Matthias Ekholm is one thing. It was it was horrible and beautiful. Yeah. But it was just one of those kind of like, huh. Yeah. Does does David Riddick get one uh when he's in goal like next him. time? Like <laughs> yeah. Like did, did Tony Botetto or Freddie Gaudreau get one? Like come on. Oh yeah. What about it, it was, Lick? It was I mean, especially for a guy like Luke Cunning, whose biggest legacy in Nashville was playing 82 games when everybody kept asking, why isn't he a healthy scratch? <laughs> but that's, sort of, that's sort of a lasting legacy. Uh, and I want to end with one more big fat plus. Uh, it's it. not somebody uh, who has stepped out onto the ice. I don't think, you know, very rarely – uh, and that is equipment manager Let's go. Pete Rogers. Uh, another Ooh. moment during the San Jose Sharks game. Got a big old assist on Luke Evangelista's goal. Uh, Evangelina's stick broke while you know playing defense. Uh, Pete Rogers, the equipment manager, had a stick absolutely ready for him at the drop of a hat. Evangelista picked it up, got behind the defense, and scored a goal on a breakaway. Uh, the best part of this, Anne, if you haven't seen the clip yes. uh, the Nashville Predators put out, was the entire Predators bench, not just, you know, leaning over the glass, uh, you know, waiting to, you know, high five Evangelista. Everybody on the bench went over and mobbed Pete. Just That's like right. grabbed around him, was like patting him on the head, shouting like, yeah, Pete, F yeah, Pete. <laughs> Like that is a team that like knows that the yeah. equipment managers just made a big time assist uh, on a goal because of how fast he did his job there. Pete Rogers is the hero we all didn't know we need because this is what he does. If if you watch him, he literally tracks the puck by stick, so he yeah. knows what stick. And if you watch that video clip, Luke Evangelista does not miss a stride. No, I mean, he gets that. He does not slow down. He does not miss a stride. That stick is ready for him. Pete Rogers is so freaking good at his job. And just to add to that, a friend of mine works for the Edmonton Oilers, and she had an opportunity to interview Matias at home after the he came back to Nashville. She did an interview with him, and he talked about that. And he said, you know, you love to see your former teammates, but in this league, teammates kind of come and go. The people who don't are the staff.
Yeah. Those are the guys that ask about how are your families? Those are the guys when you're injured that are invested in getting, you know, getting you back at the, those are the guys who do the little things that change your career. Yeah. Pete Rogers, you are a career changer. And I love that video because if you watch the video too, you see him go, yes, yeah. you know, he, like, he no. cheers just as well before everybody else just starts mobbing him too. Yeah. He deserves an assist at HL. Yeah. It, it was cool to see him. Uh, you know, somebody right. who's been with the team, you know, forever. That's the be very beginning. Yeah. Uh, so somebody who deserves a lot of kudos, uh, as a lot of people have pointed out, equipment finishing is kind of a thankless job. Yeah. Uh, on tomorrow's Locked on Predators, Predators take on the Vancouver Canucks. That's a big game. But another minus that I think Bears talking about a little bit is then Phil Tomasino and his play this season. Good. We'll do a little bit of a deep dive into what's been going on with him tomorrow on the Locked on Predators podcast. Plus, of course, Preds Canucks preview. And where can people find your work? You can find my work online at insidethepreds.com. You can find me on Twitter X at Ann K underscore Mama on Ice. Yeah, you can find me at penaltyboxradio.com or on X at underscore NS Morgan. Also, be sure to follow the podcast on Facebook and Instagram as well, Locked on Predators, or on X at LO underscore Predators. That's going to do it for us on today's Locked on Predators. Thank you for making us your first listen of the day. We'll see you tomorrow for another brand new episode.